Well, hey, Gundam Maniacs, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. In this episode, we're going to be talking about two of my favorite mobile suits, and that's the RX-782 Gundam and the Unicorn Gundam, the RX-782 from 0079, but the Unicorn from a little further in 0096. But they're not just separated by time, they're separated by two entirely different understandings of what a mobile suit is. So today, we're going to quantify the jump, reactor output, thruster force, firepower, psychomu systems, and battlefield capability. Let's get straight into the numbers. Okay, due to the era they were in for the RX-78 II, one-year war timeline, the mobile suits are brand new military platforms, and the beam weaponry has just matured enough for field use. New type research is in its infancy, and Minofsky engineering is still unstable with narrow margins of error. During the Unicorn era, now this was post scripts during the Laplace event, we get mobile suit design as mature and optimized. Psychomu systems are standard for high-end units. Psychomu frame exists, and almost nobody fully understands it yet. Multi-megawatt reactors are common. So the RX-72 isn't outdated, it's the prototype era. The Unicorn, it's not that it's advanced, it's, it's theoretical weaponry treated as a production model. As for power output, the RX-78-2 reactor outputs 1380 kilowatts, early Minofsky ultra-compact fusion reactor, enough to run a beam rifle at, a limited sustained fire, a pair of beam sabers, and basic sensor and learning computer suite. The Unicorn reactor output is a lot more, 3480 at baseline, and this is without the NTD activation. The psychoframe resonance can exceed measurable output parameters, and fusion reactor, thrusters, psychomu all feed into and amplify one another. In plan engineering terms, Unicorn is more than twice the documented power and exponentially more theoretical headroom. As for maneuverability and propulsion, the RX-72 thruster package includes chemical rockets and early Minofsky vector control, max acceleration rated roughly equal to contemporary Xeon prototypes designed for general purpose combat, no biofeedback or pilot amplification. For the Unicorn thrusters, multi-stage high output thrusters with psycho frame damping, NTD mode dramatically increases responsiveness, thruster plume power surpasses even some mobile armors. Control surfaces react on the scale of intent to action, not pilot motion. If the RX-78-2 reacts to pilot movement, Unicorn reacts to pilot thought. As for firepower, for the RX-78-2 arsenal we've got the beam rifle, hyper bazooka effective but conventional, beam saber standard emitter running on general power supply, Vulcans useful but only situationally. For the Unicorn R, so we've got the Beam Magnum, output comparable to a battleship grade mega particle cannon. Each shot stresses frame integrity. Beam Tomfas, high energy blades with instant deployment. Hyper Beam Javelin, multi phase beam weapon with extreme penetration. Psycho Field Defense, able to reflect, dampen, or nullify energy weapons. And a spatial distortion capability. It's a resonance event, a non weapon phenomenon that still decides entire battles. This is an incremental improvement, it's weapons from two different eras of physics. As for control systems, with the RX-72 cockpit, each of those manual controls has a basic learning computer. There's new type advantages that come from the pilot, though not the machine. But for the Unicorn cockpit, full psycho frame lattice throughout the mobile suit, NTD system that predicts enemy movement over its limitations, directs machine response at neural speed. Pilot becomes a biological component in a larger computational system. So while the RX-78-2 enhances a pilot, the Unicorn integrates the pilot. And for the hypothetical combat outcome, if these two units face each other, the deciding factors are simple. The sensor and reaction speed, the Unicorn tracks the RX-78-2 before Amuro even moves. Power and thrust, the Unicorn's going to out-accelerate and outrun. The firepower of Beam Magnum, one shot, equals structural kill, no shield, no armor. As for the Psychomu system, the NTD locks the RX-78-2 down at system level. The Unicorn doesn't just overpower it, it outthinks it. The RX-72 could beat Xeon Big Zam and Elite Xeon Aces, but against Unicorn, it's not rivalry, it's demonstration of Gundam's technological art. So, the final takeaway, the real size of the power gap. The RX-72 is the first practical mobile suit, while the Unicorn really is the machine that bends Minofsky physics to its will. The power gap isn't about the generator output we were talking about, it really just has to do with the evolution of the Gundam from Project V all the way up to Unicorn and the Plus incident. It's pretty cool to see that type of evolution within the story, you know, canonically within Universal Century. And from 79 to 96, that doesn't seem like that might be as big of a leap as, say, maybe comparable to how we see the internet. You know, when, sure, there was like connecting and servers and networks, but once it became all interconnected, people can then access it in their homes. Just tech seemed to evolve rapidly to the point where we're doing it just on small devices in our hands. And, and 
in a lifetime, in shorter than a lifetime. So it is really cool to see that sort of technological leap from the RX-78 to the Unicorn. So let me know below, what are some cool technological leaps that we get out of the Unicorn? Are you a uh, fan of? Because I do like the Saikamu stuff. I got to say, the, the biocomputer stuff, how that all has evolved and matured. I mean, the Unicorn really is that ultimate version of the Gundam thought all the way through to the end. Shout out to the supporters that make this possible. If that's something you're into, check the links in the description below. Also check the links to our Discord. We have a lot of fun. Um, and then if there's, if there's anything else, uh, feel free to reach out if you ever want to comment on one of the shows, uh, one of our live shows, um, yeah, or, or an idea for a video. I kind of like that. Sometimes I read comments that have some pretty cool ideas that I can turn into videos. I appreciate that. So, well, anyway, we'll talk later.